unfair intimidation. What truth may objectively be is difficult enough to determine, but we should not, in our dealings with people, let this fact terrorize us. To this end, criteria are used that at first sight seem convincing. One of the most dependable is the reproach that a statement is too subjective. If this is brought to bear with an indignation in which rings the furious harmony of all reasonable people, one has grounds for a few seconds to feel self-satisfied. The notions of subjective and objective have been completely reversed. Objective means the non-controversial aspect of things, their unquestioned impression, the facade made up of classified data that is the subjective. And they call subjective anything which breaches that facade, engages the specific experience of a matter, casts off all ready-made judgments and substitutes relatedness and substitutes relatedness to the object for the majority consensus of those who do not even look at it, let alone think about it, that is, the objective. Just how vacuous the formal objection to subjective relativity is can be seen in the particular field of the latter, that of aesthetic judgments. Anyone who, drawing on the strength of his precise reaction to a work of art, has ever subjected himself in earnest to its discipline, to its imminent formal law, the compulsion of its structure, will find that objections to the merely subjective quality of his experience vanish like a pitiful illusion. And every step that he takes, by virtue of his highly subjective innervation towards the heart of the matter, has incomparably greater force than the comprehensive and fully backed up analyses of such things as style, whose claims to scientific status are made at the expense of such experience. This is doubly true in the era of positivism and the culture industry, where objectivity is calculated by the subjects managing it. In face of this, reason has retreated entirely behind a windowless wall of idiosyncrasies, which the holders of power arbitrarily reproach with arbitrariness, since they want subjects impotent, for fear of the objectivity that is preserved in these subjects alone.